Introducing the TV series One Day at a Time, a sitcom that effortlessly weaves humor, shock, and poignancy into its narrative fabric. As you delve into the world of this show, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions. Are there lesser known facts or anecdotes that fascinate you about this series? What enduring qualities make it an everlasting symbol of the industry? Stay tuned because we've got a lineup of funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting for you. Now, imagine the laughter and tears that have echoed through living rooms over the years as viewers connected with the highs and lows of the characters' lives. Before we dive in, we're curious, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this show? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Get ready for an insightful journey down memory lane. Get ready for some surprises. Keep watching for the scoop on One Day at a Time's Hidden Gems. One Day at a Time, a 1975 TV series, left an enduring impact on popular culture, resonating with audiences and influencing subsequent television shows. Created by Norman Lear, the sitcom centered around a divorced mother, her two children, and their building superintendent, capturing the challenges and triumphs of a single-parent household. During its time, the show was praised for its realistic portrayal of a modern family and its willingness to address social issues. It received positive reviews for its humor, relatable characters, and groundbreaking approach to storytelling. Bonnie Franklin, who played the lead character Anne Romano, earned acclaim for her authentic portrayal of a single mother navigating life's ups and downs. The impact of the series extended beyond its original run, paving the way for a cultural shift in television. Its success led to spin-offs, including Valerie and the Hogan family, demonstrating the enduring appeal of its narrative formula. The show also inspired merchandise, showcasing its influence on consumer culture. The legacy of the show is further exemplified by its cultural relevance. The themes explored, such as feminism, divorce, and societal expectations, continue to resonate with audiences today. Its impact on subsequent generations of television creators is evident in the development of family-centric sitcoms that delve into real-life issues with humor and candor. In conclusion, the reception of the series during its time and its lasting impact on popular culture underscore its significance in the annals of television history. The exploration of relatable themes, memorable characters, and groundbreaking storytelling left an indelible mark on the television landscape, ensuring its place as a trailblazer in the world of sitcoms. In a recent interview, Mackenzie Phillips revealed that the characters Julie and Barbara from the show were loosely based on different aspects of Norman Lear's real daughters. Originally, there were plans to give Schneider his own show after the series ended, featuring a spin-off character, Schneider's nephew, played by Corey Feldman in the final episode. Ironically, both Feldman and Phillips, who later became close due to shared experiences as recovering child stars, had struggled with substance abuse issues. Valerie Bertinelli, though dabbling in drugs during that period, didn't face the same level of struggle. Glenn Scarpelli, not dealing with substance abuse, but with issues related to being gay and in the closet, found support within the Hollywood network, becoming close with Mackenzie Phillips during this time. In an interesting turn, a storyline initially intended for this show involving a would-be rapist was used in All in the Family Season 8. David Dukes, who was meant to play Anne's assailant, later played her boyfriend in a different episode. In one of the initial pilots, titled Three to Get Ready, Bonnie Franklin portrayed a nurse, resembling the character in the later reboot. This version, also featuring Marsha Rod as Bonnie's best friend, was unsold but can be found on YouTube. Pat Harrington, Jr., tasked with filling the void between scenes, brought in two minutes of laughter in each episode. He earned the show's sole Emmy, recognized for his portrayal of Schneider. So, from the early pilot variations to Pat Harrington's Emmy-winning role, the show underwent some changes. It's fascinating to observe the evolution and contributions of key elements in the series. Bonnie Franklin, in interviews, expressed her support for Mackenzie Phillips' dismissal from the series, stating that the decision was appropriate. According to Franklin, they handled that perfectly, frankly. The series was originally set in Indianapolis, Indiana, but little mention of specific places in the city was made throughout the show. Initial opening titles displayed aerial views of Indianapolis landmarks, such as the pyramids and the Indianapolis Art Museum. However, as more characters were introduced, these landmarks disappeared, leaving only a shot of Interstate 70, 
and a wide view of somewhere on Interstate 465. Mackenzie Phillips shared in an interview that during a cast meeting, drugs, including cocaine, fell out of her pocket. Pat Harrington Jr. allegedly noticed but ignored it. Bonnie Franklin contested this, stating it wasn't ignored. She was fired, as revealed in the truth behind the sitcom's television special. From Phillips' dismissal to the subtle portrayal of Indianapolis, the series underwent notable developments. These behind-the-scenes incidents add an intriguing layer to the evolution of the show. In the 1975 TV series One Day at a Time, Bonnie Franklin portrayed the mother despite being only 15 years older than Mackenzie Phillips and 16 years older than Valerie Bertinelli. The show established early on that Anne married very young, a contributing factor to her character's divorce. During the first season, as revealed in Fox's special The Truth Behind the Sitcoms, Bonnie Franklin and Pat Harrington Jr. candidly admitted that the scripts were subpar. Franklin even threatened to quit if the script quality didn't improve by the end of the season. In 2012, One Day at a Time received the Innovator Award at the TV Land Awards. Original cast members Bonnie Franklin, Mackenzie Phillips, Pat Harrington, and Glenn Scarpelli accepted the award. During the ceremony, Franklin and Harrington expressed gratitude to Norman Lear, the audience, and the cast. Glenn Scarpelli particularly thanked Mackenzie Phillips for being a fearless and honest role model for the world, following Phillips' candid autobiography High on Arrival in 29. These insights offer a glimpse into the dynamics and challenges faced by the cast during the show's early days and its later recognition at the TV Land Awards, showcasing the evolution of one day at a time. Valerie Bertinelli has openly stated in interviews that she and Mackenzie Phillips aren't as close as public perception suggests. Their differing backgrounds and upbringings contribute to a notable distance between them. During her time on One Day at a Time, Valerie Bertinelli also took on a role in the 1979 fantasy adventure film Chomps, centered around a mechanical dog. Concurrently, she auditioned for Raiders of the Lost Ark in the same year, with Steven Spielberg reportedly using the opportunity as a pretext to ask her out. Originally titled All About Us, One Day at a Time initially revolved around a single divorced mother raising her daughter. The concept, based on Whitney Manning's Blake's real-life experiences with her daughter Meredith Baxter, faced rejection from networks in the 60s. When CBS and Norman Lear eventually picked it up in 1975, Meredith Baxter had already secured a role in another successful family TV show, Aaron Spelling's Family. These insights offer a glimpse into the dynamics among the cast members and the challenges faced during the show's production. The evolution from an initial concept in the 60s to its airing in 1975, coupled with the parallel career pursuits of the cast, sheds light on the intricate journey of one day at a time. Valerie Bertinelli, preparing for her role in One Day at a Time, underwent acting classes in the summer hiatus before the second season commenced. The commitment to honing her craft reflected the dedication of the producers to enhance the show's quality. The show's theme song, This Is It, encapsulates the essence of life's unpredictability. The lyrics, sung with gusto in each episode, capture the spirit of living in the moment and facing uncertainties with resilience. It serves as a fitting backdrop to the daily challenges the characters navigate, echoing the central theme of taking life one day at a time. Following Mackenzie Phillips' termination from the series in 1980, she joined a Mamas and the Papas reunion album and tour led by her father, John Phillips. Notably, they performed This Is It, the show's theme song showcasing the intertwining of Mackenzie's personal and professional life with the iconic track. In essence, the commitment to excellence extended beyond the screen, as seen in Valerie Bertinelli's dedication to her craft. The timeless theme song, This Is It, continues to resonate through Mackenzie Phillips' post-one-day-at-a-time endeavors, adding another layer to the show's enduring legacy.